Among the many, many chai fi brands in the market, Keyfine is frankly a new entry. This brand name has previously released a variety of recording products such as microphones, but a planar dynamic IEM is a totally new foray. This is the Keyfine Delsi, a $75 IEM that is just one among only a handful of sub $100 planar IEMs. This is Keyfine's lower price planar IEM following on the heels of their $120 Clanar. Let's take a closer look and see what this thing can do. The Delsi's defining feature is supposed to be its powerful bass. The company promises that this IEM will deliver deep, rich bass with an immersive soundstage. And, well, that's it. Keyfine provides barely any information about this product other than the typical specifications. That's a bit unusual for a company trying to compete with some very big names, but there you have it. Keyfine does not provide a frequency response graph, but there are some third-party measurements online. Those measurements generally show an obvious bass emphasis with a mid-range dip. These measurements do not show a sharp 2 to 5 kHz peak, something that we tend to find on many IMs. And that's either a reliable indicator of a gentler, less shouty mid-range, or these are frankly unreliable measurements. I guess we'll have to see. As for build, the Delsi is a run-of-the-mill design. The CNC-machined metal housing is smooth. The IEM, nevertheless, is reasonably light. There are clearly legible left and right indicators on each earbud and the cable, which is a simple design choice that many IEM and headphone companies seem just not to grasp. This IEM comes with a well-made braided cable that transmits minimal microphonics. You also get a wide variety of silicone ear tips with narrow and wide bores and a hard shell carrying case. Given the price tag, the accessories here are practical. Overall, the Delsi's marketing takes a refreshing if somewhat mystifying hands-off approach. The IM is built well and comes with good accessories. Let's just get to the overall impression of the sound signature. I paired the Delsi with my FIO BTR7, Low 2 Paw S1, Matrix Mini I Pro 3, EcoZerta ITM03, and straight into the headphone sockets of those very few devices that still have them. I listen to my test playlist on Amazon Music HD, stream lossy content on Spotify and YouTube, and consumed a wide assortment of other digital media, including TV shows and movies while using the Delsi. I did true A-B comparisons using a passive switch box connected to my Mini iPro 3 and used voice meter banana. I compared against the Moondrop Stellaris, Keyfine Clanner, and the 7 Hz Timeless. The Delsi definitely has an audible bass emphasis. Sub-bass and mid-bass get a boost. In Mountains by Hans Zimmer, there's a sub-bass rumble from the very beginning of the track. It resonates and lingers throughout the song. The Delsi immediately revealed that rumble. However, that detail sounded slower on the Delsi than on the Stellaris, but the Delsi had a marginally clearer, less bloated rendition when compared to the Stellaris. The sub-bass rumble on the Clanner and the Timeless were much less obvious than what I heard on the Delsi, and as I've mentioned before in other reviews, the Clanner, Stellaris, and Timeless have a sub-bass roll-off, especially when compared to the Delsi. In Conquer by Overwork, Irodori by Kodo, and Pure Water by Mustard and Migos, among other tracks, the Delsi every time revealed its bass emphasis. Drums sounded hard, but not sharp or piercing. Each drum strike was audible and had slightly longer decay than what I heard on the Clanner and the Timeless. The Starfield had slightly sharper drum hits compared to the Delsi. The Clanner's and Timeless's mid-bass was a bit clearer than what I heard on the Delsi. Transients was faster on those IMs than what I heard on the Delsi. The mids on the Delsi are forward and very, very sibilant. The Delsi emphasizes vocal grain as well, when that detail is recorded into the track. My go-to song to test this is Orla Gartland's Why Am I Like This. That particular track has vocal grain and sibilance recorded into the mix. 
And it's obvious whether you wear a neutral sounding IEM or headphone or something that has a completely different tonality. You will be able to tell immediately whether there's a sibilance emphasis according to the headphone or IEM or it's neutral or in fact that it somehow de-emphasizes those particular frequencies. When testing your IEMs or headphones for this particular feature, let's say, you gotta make sure your track also has that mixed in because you might get the wrong impression if your vocal mix doesn't have that two to five kilohertz emphasis that the tracks that I'm testing do have. Okay, so let's move on. The Delcy's vocal push was apparent immediately in every track that I tested. For example, in this one, Orla Gartland's song, her voice on occasion sounded quite harsh to my ears with her siblings almost piercing my eardrums. A decreasing volume helped somewhat. Orla's voice remained mostly slightly ahead of the drums and well ahead of the other instruments. In comparison, the Clanner also has a very noticeable siblings push. I'd be splitting hairs trying to figure out which one of the two key fine IEMs has a greater sibilance emphasis, but frankly I think the Delcy must be the one. The Timeless also has a sibilant vocal emphasis, but not quite as sharp as what I heard on the Delcy. The Stellaris also has forward mids, and its sibilance push is aggressive, if maybe slightly more so than the Delcy. Both the Stellaris and Delcy present vocals close to the ears, while the Clanar and Timeless present vocals a little bit further away in comparison. Clarity and separation in the mids is more obvious on the Timeless and Clanar compared to the Delcy and Stellaris. The trouble seems close to neutral on the Delcy. Now, there might be a marginal mid to upper treble emphasis. Brass and horns are clear but not piercing. The Stellaris sounds similar in this way. The Timeless has the most neutral treble presentation of all of these IEMs. The Clanar has smooth treble, but I think this comes at the cost of low to mid treble dips. While brass and horns do stand out in a mix, they are not quite as obvious or as sharp as on other IEMs I compared against, that being the Clanar. As for detail retrieval, I'm hard pressed to say that the Delcy renders anything more than, say, average detail. Sharp intakes of breaths, twangs of guitar strings, multiple competing vocalists are audible, but nuanced or subtle details can get lost or muddled. For example, creaking of wood, electric buzzing effects, pops and sizzles, these types of details recorded into my test track simply did not jump out on the Delcy. As for a more quantitative test, I listened to Kazuki's song New Light. I count the number of footsteps I can hear in the first 60 seconds. The first footstep, if you're following along, is at exactly 11 seconds, and that is the sound I am referring to. In this subjective test, I counted seven footsteps with the Delcy. These sounds were sometimes clear and other times muffled. The Stellaris in this same test could only reproduce six footsteps. Both the Timeless and Clanarp rendered about eight footsteps. Regardless, none of these IEMs that I've tested presented the clarity, sharpness, and obvious details that the Blessing 3 recreates. Finally, let's discuss Soundstage. Soundstage is a multi-factor impression. The original recording, ear tips, fit, and sufficient power for peak performance all have competing roles in the experience. I use the Starfield and Aria as my benchmarks. These are what I would call average for Soundstage. Thus, compared in this manner, the Tin Hi-Fi T2 is above average, and every blonde I am ever listened to are typically very well below average. Keyfind says that the Delcy has wide soundstage. Well, compared on the subjective analysis that I do, I think this IEM soundstage is perhaps above average. It is noticeably wider than that of the Aria and Starfield, but it is not quite as wide as the Tin Hi-Fi T2. The Delcy's soundstage is also not quite as wide as what I heard on the Clanar or Timeless, but I'm frankly probably splitting hairs. There is no shortage of IMs, like I said before. You can find anything at any price. The problem with so many options is that inevitably there will be repetition. We just saw that with the Starfield 2, an IM that is essentially a carbon copy of the original and has no reason to exist. 
One other aspect you have to keep in mind is that, generally speaking, Chi Phi IEMs tend to have a prominent mid range, which is pushed ahead through a 2 to 5 kHz emphasis of sibilance and grain. Obviously, there's a market for that tuning. You might not be that market, and you should think about your preferences before pulling the trigger on any of these types of IEMs. For example, if you are of an older age or simply have a physiological limitation that makes higher frequencies harder to hear, then IEMs which emphasize those lost frequencies will sound much better than those which do not. And someone who is overly sensitive to such frequencies will have a very negative experience in comparison. Let's also keep in mind that your music has a big part in this. If you don't listen to bassy tracks or your vocal tracks are carefully mixed to exclude sibilance, then that chi-fi tuning might not be nearly as offensive or pleasing as to someone who has a different collection of music. For what it's worth, I think the Delxi is a fine product. At $75, it's a perfectly good IEM as long as you understand what you're getting. The Delcy has emphasized bass, prominent vocals, and a somewhat neutral treble. If that's the kind of sound you're looking for, then I think the Delcy might just fit the bill.